Sawdust Dust Makers. I've got a new toy. I am super excited. I purchased this machine during lockdown of 2020, <sighs> right towards the end of the year. I'd looked at all the specs, I'd seen the reviews, I was happy with the price, and this was the one that I decided to go for. <sighs> Comes on a pallet. Well, I mean, a little pallet, a little baby pallet. Still, that's cool. The Carbitec THBX330P. Spiral head, 13 inch, and bench top. Like that didn't, I mean, you saw me pick it up, but it wasn't that heavy. Well, it says here, 41 kilos. Same as a pub meal. Let's look inside. So your dust extraction. So if you've got a shop vac, it'll fit in there. If you've got a decent dust extractor, it'll fit there. And whatever one you're not using, you can plug up the other end. That's actually pretty cool. So you can plug up that end and use that end. We we'll use that end. And plug that end. I like it. Now they give you a Torx bit key there for the blades to rotate those. Keep it in its nifty little pull-ups. Where were we? So I got it set up and it went straight to work. And every time I used this machine I was reminded of the parts of it that I don't understand. Granted, I'm not the sharpest tool in the sandwich. I've read this. And I want to criticise, but I want to be fair as well. It does explain how to operate things, but not what they do, or why I would want to use that, if that makes sense. What I do find very interesting though, is that of all of the businesses that make woodworking machinery, have a gap in their manuals, reviews on their tools, there's often complaints that the manual is lacking or there's some gap between expectations of what the customer wants from the company or what the company thinks the customer wants in their manual. If we're honest, woodworking is a bit of a, an old man's game. You know, I don't think that's a surprise to anyone that probably the majority of woodworkers are older men and reading instruction manuals is, you know, oh, I don't bloody need to read that. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. The real men don't use instructions, son. So maybe it's all born from that. You know, not until the last few years with newer generations coming in, we actually read this stuff. And they're probably all behind because they're like, crap, people read those things? Oh, man, I don't even know what it says. And then it got me thinking even more. So I thought of the next absolutely logical thing to do. I'm kind of standing here waiting for you to guess, but of course. <laughs> I called up Carbitec. Oi. So with lockdown over, albeit briefly, I went into the Melbourne Carbitec store and get a bit of a first-hand demonstration and meet someone that I could bounce all my questions off. Online videos and tutorials and reviews and things are great, but for a beginner like myself, talking with someone face to face really makes a huge difference. They also allowed me to film in the store, but that proved to be a little bit difficult. I've got Ben here. Go. Ben's the resident thickness expert. No matter how thorough, probably not going to go. Like drive the house. Yeah. Yeah, okay. No, I think he'll, he'll be here for a while. Oh, really? Hello, darkness, my old friend. So, a big thanks to the Melbourne store manager, Stephen, and a massive thanks to Ben, who uh, was the awesome salesperson who took me through the machine. One of those things that Ben really helped me understand was the replaying feature. So, why did we have these eight? 
different measurements down the bottom here from one eighth of an inch which is 3.18 mil all the way up to one and three quarter of an inch which is about 44.45 mil the reasoning behind that is they're all very common depths it's like a set and forget type thing so just slide the pointer along to what depth you're after spin that wheel and once it stops you know that you're at your exact depth that you want another thing was the lock why like what okay it locks but but why why do i want to why why should i lock it to me it just sounded like a bit of extra work now it's pretty straightforward locking it means that it will eliminate any snipe and you could run a hundred boards through there and despite all of the vibration and however long that may take you to to run that timber through your depth isn't going to change it is locked in and it will not move and then you had this which is the depth gauge at the front so as an early warning system it's really good because if you're about to put your timber through the machine and then that pops up to tell you that you're about to bite off way more than you can chew so you don't overload the machine. So there's 26 blades in this machine and they all have two cutting sides which means you get to turn them all once then you've got a whole new set of blades before you need to go and purchase some more. The blades are really easy to change I have actually already flipped these blades once, but hitting two nails on the first day that I used it will end up doing that to you. Actually, I need to buy a, a magnetic, not a magnetic, words have escaped. Gizmo. The metal nail finding oh, thing. Oh, metal detector. A metal detector? Yes. So make sure you invest in a metal detector. So what's my verdict? There are a lot of thicknesses on the market. Even Aldi has a thicknesser all the way up to your big boys. Do I recommend this thicknesser? Of course I do. For me, as a beginner in a small workshop, this is a big machine but doesn't take up a lot of space. It's got a two year warranty. I've been feeding this every week for the last nine months with some of the hardest, oldest, roughest hardwood, and it's just done a tremendous job. I think the biggest takeaway from this is that if you work a lot in reclaimed wood, get yourself a thicknesser. They're invaluable. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section. If you've got a thicknesser, I'd love to know what one you've got, what you love about it, what you hate about it. I'm Ryan from Ozsordust Makers. Thank you for watching. See you later.